In our previous video, we have successfully found how the concentration of a reactant, and let's say that we're studying a reaction where reactants A become products, we have found how the concentration at any given time changes as a function of time. We have seen that when the order is 1, we can calculate the concentration of reactants by including the initial concentration exponent kt, where k is the rate constant and this a0 is the initial concentration. So this formula will allow us to calculate the concentration of th that we still have left of reactants at any given time. The, we have found this by imposing that we have a first order reaction. So this is only true when you have a first order reaction. In other words, when the rate is k times a, and you have just an exponent of 1 here. What we're going to do now is try to understand what is the function that tell us what is the concentration of reactants at any given time, but for exponent 2, for second order. So the process is very similar. It's still a trivial or somewhat trivial differential equation and what the process is you move the factors depending on concentration to the left, the time dependent factors to the right, and what you see is that you have a differential of A on this side, differential of T on this side, so you integrate on both sides between the beginning of the reaction, that is at when we consider time zero or initial concentration, to any given time. And that will be our AT. Notice that to the integral of 1 over x squared is minus 1 over x. So if you're ever in doubt, remember, maybe you may remember the derivatives a little better than the integrals. So if you derive the 1 minus 1 over x, you should be able to find 1 over x squared. And that's between the limits, x initial x, and at any given x. Okay. So in this case, the integral, this integral is 1 over a between the extremes, the initial concentration and any given concentration, and I'm forgetting the one negative, okay, and that is, I'm going to put the minus one in here so that, and that's the final minus initial. Hopefully you can follow this, and again, it's this one is trivial, is the k is a constant, goes out of the integral, the integral of dt is just t, so I have a minus kt, or if you will, plus, plus. So what you have is this dependence over here, and notice that the, this negative has disappeared, and, and you can also plot it in a, in a linear way, where your y is a function of concentration, and your x is time. In this case, you will have a positive slope, and you will have, as the y-intercept, the, the inverse of the initial concentration. We can also, again, impose uh, the half-life conditions in which what is the time when the initial concentration gets halved. You substitute this in here and solve for t, and what you find is that, unlike first order, the half-life for second order does depend on the initial concentration. Okay, so this is a big difference between initial, in, between first order and second order. Okay, now uh, how can we calculate a kinetic constant, or how can we identify if it's a second order? Well, if one can plot one over concentration versus time and find and obtains a straight line, we can say that it's a second order. Okay. However, if what we plot 1 over concentration, because remember, sometimes we do not know the order, we can calculate the concentrations at different times, put that into an Excel spreadsheet, plot the inverse of concentrations versus time, and so if we do not find that to be a straight line, we can say that it's, it is not a second order, at least with respect to, to A. Another trivial case, and I'm including this one because it's fairly fast, is for zero order. In other words, when your rate is constant regardless of the concentration. This is an atypical case, but it may still be possible in which your rate is constant throughout, which 
is kind of not very intuitive. There are some cases where that's the case. In both cases, the both integrals are trivial. So one does need to include the initial minus, sorry, final minus initial. And notice that the initial t, initial time is zero. But then what you have, your y and your x are also easy to plot. Okay, so again, the if we impose the half-life conditions, one can find again a half-life dependency that this again does depend on the initial concentration of reactants. You will be given all these equations, however, you have to know where they come from. We are not wizards here, we're just solving some simple differential equations. Okay, how can we apply this? Well, first of all, let's um, sum up what we have learned so far. If we have a first order reaction, if we plot the logarithm of the concentration versus the time, we will obtain a straight line. If on the other hand you have a second order reaction, once you plot the initial concentration, sorry, once you plot the concentration of reactants at any given time, in this case, you would obtain a straight line. You cannot obtain a straight line both in both cases. It, a reaction is either first order or second order. Okay, And if it's zero order, you would also obtain a straight line when you plot the concentration versus time. How can we apply this for a specific problem? In this case, we have the same reaction that we used in the last video say that you do not know what is the dependency of or what is the order of the reaction. You do not know how much this is. Could it be first order, second order, zero order? What we're going to do is in our spreadsheet, experimentally you measure time and concentration. You can do that experimentally and then in a spreadsheet you add another column in which you calculate the logarithm and the inverse of the concentration. And we plot those. If we plot the concentration versus time and it's not a straight line, what we, could say, what we can say is that it's not zero order. Okay, when we plot the inverse in here of the concentration versus time and it's not a straight line, it means that it's not second order. Finally, if we plot the logarithm versus time and it is a straight line, it means it is second, so excuse me, it is first order. Okay. So this is a technique in which by just plotting, adding just columns on your Excel spreadsheet, it allows us to find what representation is the most linear. And of course, how can we assess if it's linear or not? You'll have to look at your R square coefficient of your um, regression of your least square fit. And in this case, you can safely say that it's a first order reaction, at least respect to the dinitrogen pentoxide.